Oh, great. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Hey. Right. Always trying to find a space where that's comfortable and has good lighting. <laughs> hey. I know. I lucked out with this like desk lamp that has like pretty good zoom lighting and whenever I zoom from work it's like horrible and I was like oh I really appreciate my desk <laughs> <laughs> um I, I'm drinking wine with this is that allowed <laughs> uh absolutely <laughs> uh we just can't drink alcohol on city property that's the only thing unless we have like a license but you're at your private residence so Oh, okay. oh man, Eamon. What's up? You look like you're comfy over there. <laughs> you know, you got to do, you got to make your best surroundings that you can. Yeah. Uh, how's your cooking uh, experience going? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, pretty good. Um, what did I make? Oh, I found a. Um, a banana cake recipe so like the other day it was, i made a, a one layer banana cake it tastes just like banana bread Ooh. and then i did a layer of peanut butter frosting and then once that was set chocolate frosting with and then i did like a little piping on top that sounds delicious it was good it didn't last very long i'm sure it didn't <laughs> i made my first pie of the season and it was actually my first peach pie oh nice it came out pretty good. What's up, good. everybody? Hi. How's it going? Hello there. Um, yeah, we're here. It's Tuesday. I appreciate everybody's flexibility with my uh, lack of getting that agenda posted. But now we're here, and that's good. Mm -hmm. also, this also gave me some time to catch up on a few things, which was nice. It gave you some time to let that beer just kind of like fully come in, right? It was like oh, yeah. really, it was patchy. You needed another week. So yeah, yeah, like, exactly. That's what I was. Oh, that's what I was going for. Exactly, yeah. man. You really, you really got me pegged, Damon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I transitioned from vacation and, and didn't shave, and then I was like, ah, it's a fall beard now. I'm just gonna keep it. Mm. We'll see how. Yeah. I, I'm like, I just can't stand it though. I'm really not a beard like the food and the stuff and the, eh. well if you're forget, if you're constantly getting food in there that's a whole other problem i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm a messy eater I'm, I'm like, maybe not so much this but you know spoon <laughs> <laughs> um so i think we'll be missing alan and Lori tonight that's the only regrets i have from people mm. um and then I'm waiting uh, to hear from the mayor's office on when uh, three new board members will be confirmed. Um, it's Michael Abiotello, Ashlyn Kradick, and Kent Alexander. Because that's good because we're getting low. I got to look at our little roster here. We're at like the lowest we can be actually, mm -hmm. which is five. So we're supposed to have between five and 15. So that's good on the municipal board. And we're not talking about the, 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 um, ink board. Did I share everybody the, the, the spreadsheet with the, the, the member lists of the ink in the, the municipal earlier today? I know I'm sure everybody's been busy and haven't had a chance to look at it, but, um, and just, some, just some house cleaning and, uh, 
I had a I, I, I had a long talk with George Myers and I like spent some time with him and uh, he's going to stay on the ink board and try to be, be more active again. He's that's has some time, which is good. But uh, yeah. Should we wait a little bit for Kathy's service? I'm sure she's supposed to be here and maybe I'll text her to see if she's coming. Oh, she just texted me. She's having a internet access issue. So, and then who are we missing? Then we're missing Freeman and, and Kathy Murray and George. I'll text them right now. Does anybody have Kathy Murray's? Uh, t uh, oh, I mean, I will just look on the, the contact sheet. To... No, it's just her home number. Does anybody have Kathy Murray's cell phone number? I think it's in that spreadsheet. It's. I, I think that's her home number. She's oh, still, then I don't know. She still has a home number. Yeah. Good. Well, we got our chat. From, uh, let's see. <clears throat> that's good so yeah we can talk about that in the board meeting um danielle let's see what my agenda looks like well i just sent a link in the chat and i'm wondering if anyone else has trouble opening it no i, I it works for me works for me it might just be my computer i just wanted to double check that i'm sending it out <laughs> try a different browser danielle Oh, oh, she's not, Kathy Murray's not going to be here either. Oh, and she raised some money for us for on her Facebook birthday thing, 310 bucks. That's awesome. That's so great. Hey, thank you, Kathy. That's awesome. So she's not going to be here today. And I'm waiting for, we're just waiting for, should we wait for you? Do we have that we wouldn't have quorum then, right? Or, oh no, if there's only five members, I guess it doesn't take much. Takes, uh, it would take, let's see, quorum for municipal, we got Eamon, we got Danielle, we just need Freeman and I just texted him or Esther. Maybe Esther will, and I have a talk with Esther and see where she's gonna be doing. So I think it's been a couple months since she's given birth. I wonder when, how long should we get for her maternity leave? How long is maternity leave Stephen Pedagorski for the Arts Council Board? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> undefined. I forget from when I took it. Yeah, what is paternity leave? What's maternity leave? It's the same, is it nine months? Should we give no it a idea. year? <laughs> Freeman's running a bit late. Kathy Murray's not coming, and Kathy Service is having some service issues. So <laughs> she was just uh, oh, there. She is. Oh, is, is she coming on? All right. Yeah. Sweet. So then that's it. Let me. I'll harass George and see if he he can actually join us for the first time. He says, uh, Freeman says, start without me. I'll join shortly. I just got to want to wait for Kathy service to get here. That's Freeman. And then uh, I want to get Kathy because she does the minutes. So it'd be nice. Um, the speaker, I see her here. She's muted and the video's off. So I don't know if it's working. Oh, <clears throat> participants. Oh, great. I think she doesn't want to like, she, she had some issues with her, um, her video from last board meeting. So I think Kathy is uh, gonna be not having video on this meeting. Should I ask to unmute her? Let's see, I just sent a little thing so we can hear her to make sure she's here and she can hear. Hey, Kathy, can you hear us? Check. 
Kathy Service. <laughs> She's on there. All right. Um, so we need Freeman for we need you for quorum. All right, so I guess I'm gonna just say, what is this? Uh, what is this? Uh, this is a board meeting being held via Zoom. All the audio video is gonna be recorded. I'd like to open, open up public comment period. Are there any public comments? Call in people, anybody? Okay. Um, we'll wait a little bit. Freeman's almost there. Did everybody get the minutes and review them? Yeah, I'm gonna wait for Freeman to do a, to do a, uh, to approve the minutes. So we can just chat about some more stuff. Um, yeah. Did you see Kathy's comment? I can hear you, but on another computer that doesn't have Zoom completely. All right. Sounds good. I'm glad that she can hear us. So she's here. Um, uh, so we'll just um, table the meeting minutes thing until Freeman shows up and we can go start talking about the grant round because uh, that's interesting. And... Uh, I'll open up saying I did some work on the guidelines and I shared that with the grant committee. And I also updated some uh, web pages that we have up. Um, and the grant committee met last week and we asked some questions of the MCC that I shared with the grant committee. So Rachel and Danielle, you can jump in anytime you want and start chatting about it. Um, we haven't been allocated the money. They don't know how much yet because the state budget is not approved. Uh, we have some questions about uh, accessibility and residency in the age of Zoom and streaming and whether uh, the locality of Northampton is necessary, whether residing or um, per, you know, streaming the, the event, the public component part of your event from Northampton or Florence or Leeds is necessary. Uh, and what that means. So I've been in contact with the MCC, which was, we had, I was supposed to have a phone call, but then didn't really work out because nobody was in their office. So we were, all of each other were calling each other's office numbers and nobody, everybody was working remotely. So that didn't really work out. And it was a really tight time frame for the call, but I'm supposed to get a response by email from Lisa Simmons uh, about all our questions. Um, but I'll try to schedule another call with them. Uh, so right now, I think, you know, we can, I want to share the guidelines with the grant committee this week, and then I'm going to draft a press release tomorrow morning to share everybody, and then we can schedule a workshop uh, in October. Um, right now, the grant round opens on October 1st. The deadline's November 15th. So the grant subcommittee thought like mid-October would be a good um, time to, uh, uh, have like an online Zoom workshop that's open to anybody who's interested in jumping on. And we wanted to take similar uh, elements of the workshop we did at 33 Holly Street last year and um, have that to be part of the, the Zoom workshop, which is like, you know, maybe offer the tutorial on how to do everything and links, but talk about what we look for as an LCC specifically and like kind of a tips and tricks or FAQ section um, with different uh, members of the grant committee and or other board members who'd wanna to join on. Hey, oh, Freeman's here. Looks like he's in the bathroom. Hey, Freeman. Sorry, right, gang. Hi, oh, you're good. Good. Yeah, you're in a different place, which it's weird to see you in, an, in not your, your breezeway. Is it too cold? Uh, yeah, I'm a sissy, you know. I, I'm not. I'm not used to this temperature. 
Warm. And I didn't have, I didn't have my warm my more my cold weather uh, gear on. So uh, okay. So in the kitchen. We we weren't discussing much. We were just catching up a little bit and joking and talking about. Uh, um, Kathy's actually on the call, but she's just listening. Um, no video, and she doesn't have a microphone right now. So, but I, she's been typing. So if you want to communicate with Kathy, you can communicate with her on the chat. Okay, I won't say anything about her then. Okay, just to make sure that everybody's here. Uh, Lori, Kathy Murray, um, and Esther George, and um, who is the other person that's not here today? Uh, there's one other person. Um, yeah, so did you? So let's go back to the minutes and we'll pick up our. Uh, conversation about uh the grant round after we do the minutes did everybody get this check take out the uh, look at the minutes and are there any amendments edits uh or things to add additions to the minutes no they look good to me yeah thanks kathy for checking in with me <laughs> I, was, I, I was supposed to send her a sentence um reworking the sentence and she remembered and checked in with me so can i have a motion to approve the minutes as uh, as they are so moved can i have a second from amen or danielle second okay all in favor it's amen danielle and freeman right now are our board members okay on unanimous the minutes have passed for last month thank you so much everybody um Moving forward on the agenda, we're gonna go back to the grant round and I'll just reiterate, the uh, grant round opens October 1st, um, but you're familiar with a lot of the work we've done. I've been communicating with the MCC, uh, Mina and or Lisa Simmons. We have some questions about uh, what it means uh, to be in the time of COVID with streaming as opposed to a public engagement. Um, and a couple other questions on our grant committee, uh, subcommittee um, thing and that, uh, our, our notes that we made, we wanted the MCC to define accessibility and live streaming. Um, we have some questions about geographic grant eligibility. Do you have to be, be a mass resident or are you flexible? Say if you lived in Massachusetts and you're like, you know, you're sheltering with your parents in another state um, and do we have to have a plan for online contingency for a council priorities that defines a plan for social distancing in accordance with CDC guidelines? And um, we also asked the MCC, are there going to be new questions this year on the online application? And as Rachel predicted, it is not changing. It's the same one they had in 2016, because probably changing that dinosaur of a um develop like uh, a programming would be uh really difficult and they probably don't have anybody else who can do it anymore so the questions are all gonna be the same so i think it's going to be up to us to really um provide guidance in the time of covid um and the other questions we haven't had any response to i haven't heard from lisa nor mina um, I'm going to reach out to them again to see if I can schedule another call with them or a Zoom to see a if they can be available for a workshop or there'll be another new workshop that's like online that we can post because you know I was going through all of the like um, workshop material and videos they have on YouTube and it's all dated to like 2016 2017 and I'm hoping they would have some more um, updates and they still haven't updated their their information it's still the same dates as last year on the mcc site so um, there's only a portion of it with the new dates up and i was looking in like some of their back and some of their information and it is still what what was there last year so um i think it's you know down the wire in this one so uh i would we could be very vague. I think, you know, we should work on the grant subcommittee and the board should work on the guidelines, make sure they're as tight as possible. Cause we have to post them before October 1st. And then uh, on top, the next piece is that I'll draft that PSA. And I, hopefully we can, we can target a date tonight of when a workshop of what, when availability is, we could either do that um, instead of a board meeting next month, or we can have our board meeting at a different time. 
Very nice. Very nice. You have a new puppy, Steve? No, it's my Steve. son's dog. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, so if we, 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 I think, you know, since everybody always schedules second Tuesday, maybe we can, we can target a second Tuesday evening um, in October. And then maybe we can, if we need to have a board meeting, we can have a board meeting later on in the month because it makes it a lot more flexible with us, you know, having Zoom uh, board meetings. We don't have to schedule the, the hearing rooms and, and things like that. So I feel like, you know, everybody's been a little bit more flexible with the time. So, you know, what do you guys think about having the workshop on the second Tuesday in October? Works for me. I think we, as a committee, we named that if we wanted to have a separate one, we flagged the next day, Wednesday, October 13th oh, okay. as a possible 14. time. Okay. 14, 14. Yeah. So either way, like I have that Tuesday saved in my calendar. So that works really well and is super easy if, if a lot of people want to attend and support. So I think that's great. If we have like urgent business that we need the our, our regular scheduled meeting to deal with, then I think the next day is fine. And we can use that Tuesday as like a mini prep refresh in case, um, we need it. Well, while we do the, the 14th, I just missed that when I was making notes. So my apologies. Um, what time is, you think 6.30 PM, 6 PM or later on? 7. 7 PM, Wednesday, October 14th. That work. Right. And we said we would record it. So we don't, that will be the only session we hold, but then we'll make the recording available. Yeah. And then we can, you know, we'll make sure that so everybody, anybody can, you know, email or email us or you know maybe we can be i can do something through the facebook uh the arts council um facebook group not the page which has a little bit more you know maybe we can be on there live or something at another time or something you know something like that we'll post that and then go ahead danielle is there so brian i've seen Zooms that also live stream through Northampton Open Media. Do our Zoom calls automatically live stream? Mm, this one is open to anybody who wants to join. No, they don't live stream. There's no outlet. So they, so what they do is they use this okay. this software called Restream, um, and they have that live. What is on there? YouTube Live or something? Uh -huh. Is that where you guys see it on Twitch or a lot? Our YouTube Live. I think they use YouTube Live, right? I, yeah, I think I, I've seen them do city council meetings. I know the city council meetings take place by via Zoom and then they are also streaming concurrently on YouTube. So I guess ours are as well. They're but I'm not, not gonna go to YouTube and check. They're not the they're feedback loop will be crazy. But I Okay. So I'm wondering if there's any way that we can have our Zoom session where we can like share screen and do video, but also have our our Zoom session broadcast through Facebook Live. I uh, have to talk just so that up. anyone well then the, the problem with that is that then we'd have to have somebody on Facebook live and on zoom because you can't uh, moderate Facebook live from zoom there's like there's so the way they do it uh Danielle is they have somebody moderating YouTube live and they also have somebody moderating Zoom. So it'd be like Dave's on like YouTube Live or Al's on YouTube. I don't know if you don't know, there's like different people that work there. Um, Cause what they're using is they're using this software that just takes the video feed and the audio from Zoom and then just pushes it to YouTube. So it would take some more okay. staff. We could do it. It would just take some production coordination. I just have to, and also have to like buy the, the program or work with Northampton Open Media to use it. Cause it's special software. That's how we did Transperformance as well um and the summer okay. concert series it takes like a special computer with the software they have to have it concurrently um and i've never done it we've only done it when we're like use like facebook live as the original and then we restream to twitch and restream to to zoom so it would take a little bit of um uh, learning on my part or getting northampton open media involved to do it uh what would it be possible to do facebook live like, is there a way to like screen share a Zoom and have that be the thing that broadcasts over Facebook Live? I'm only suggesting it because I think that we have so many artists who are now subscribed to the Northampton Arts Council page and the group that we made after yeah. um, COVID that like, I, I feel like people will just need to tune in if it's book. 
Um, that's it's and it's not to say that a record we can put the recording on our page as well and they can choose to engage with it later. But I I kind of imagine that we might get some we might pick up some viewers if we have it available. So how I understand it, I might be wrong, Danielle. You cannot live Zoom with a group. You can only live Zoom with a Facebook page. So there's a way when you're live Zooming with a Facebook page which is a business entity that it will just automatically notify the group that we're live. So that would work like that. It would be nice to just engage all those artists that we have on the Facebook group. Um, why don't we, we, the problem with that is that we could just get together like the grant subcommittee. We can just all get together at one computer and just go to Facebook live and have it there and it will automatically record. And then it will notify all the Facebook group uh, people as opposed to doing a zoom. Um, because I feel like everybody understands Facebook. It's a little bit more accessible to Zoom because it's a separate software and people have difficulty with it. Um, so using Facebook, I feel like is, and people can have it on their phones. And um, I just feel like more people subscribe to Zoom that, I mean, subscribe to Facebook than they do to Zoom. Um, so maybe- and just that, a, a clarifying point that you don't have to have Facebook to watch a Facebook Live video stream so for those people they would join the meeting the same way they would have if it were zoom, a zoom link um so that it's not it doesn't exclude anyone if they're not facebook subscribed so that's a statement not a question have, right that is a statement i just wanted okay. to clarify it because it always comes up at, okay. that it could be a, a point of concern how does how does um when George does the Q and A, does that with with directors? Is that through Facebook Live or is that through Zoom or YouTube? I've watched them, but I don't recall the platform. I haven't. I, I can ask George. I, like I haven't really watched any of the city council meetings, nor have I watched. I watched one Northampton Open Media thing, which was, uh, you know, they watched. They did a film and then they had a talk back. But I haven't seen a lot of the other technologies used for uh with with zoom i you know i know what i understand and what i can use and uh i know that we could all get together like the three of us could just be in a room and like we can go on facebook live and then it would notify all the subscribers that are on the group and the page that we're on live and then we're talking about the grant round um that would have a pretty um, big reach yeah amen i was just gonna say can you can you be all together in a room uh if we were if people were comfortable with that. If they're not, that's fine. We can wear masks and things like that. Oh, yeah, I just right. wanted to make sure we were in compliance with whatever we had to be in compliance with. Yeah. Know, or broadcasting out like something we were doing wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Idea. That's, 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 well, you know, from my, what we've been through in the past, it just depends, depends on the size of the room and the protocols that we use to be there. Uh, we cannot, you can only have one feed. So the idea is that you have to pick one you, you pick one software setup, whether it's YouTube, and then there's software that Northampton Open Media uses, and it takes the YouTube stream, and then it refeeds it out and just puts it out, exports it out to wherever. You can't be at multiple feeds, multiple different platforms, okay? So I can't, we can't all like be on Zoom, and then somebody be on YouTube, and somebody be on Facebook, and it will all be synced up. What, what have you been using, Rachel? Yeah, so it's um, it is Facebook Live, but it's it's also Zoom. So it's like you the Zoom t is how you get the people in the room, you and the the people attending or the people being interviewed, and then through your individual Facebook account, like your organization Facebook account, you then have a live video of it. So they're taking the Zoom feed, like us, and they're exporting that to the Facebook, there's a, there's a stream key that you put into Facebook Live and then it streams that, but then there has to be somebody moderating the Zoom or we're chatting in here and there has to be somebody moderating the Facebook live stream, but there's only one camera. There's only one, like one originating, there's like an originating feed and then it's just rebroadcast to different outlets. Um, I will say that the cinema did like a bunch of different interview platforms initially and then landed on Facebook Live as like the best one in part because it keeps the video alive for days 
it's really cool. It just like continues to play and appear in the feed. So even if you missed the, the event, you can catch up with it later pretty easily. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're over, we're over 9,000 views on the trans performance right now on Facebook, which is really cool. Mm. People can keep on watching it as well as the summer concert series. I do like that, that, that as well. Um, it's pretty cool. So, you know, if we could copy that at all, and I don't that? think it would be too, like, I think it'd be great if we could copy the model that you, you all have been using at the Cinemax. I have done those and it seems really great. And you have your option. If you want to go through Zoom, you can, if you want to go through, um, Facebook live, then you can, or is it just the participants? Like the, the four of us would be in zoom and our zoom would go through. Okay. And yeah, then people could really join us on zoom if we make the link public and they would be, but then they would be broadcast on Facebook live. Right. It's not, let's keep it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it kind of depends what you want. It, um, who's, if you want it to, okay. to feel like, Oh, like a workshop where like the people who participate are the people in the room. Zoom is probably the way to go. If it's more of like a Q and A style presentation, I think Facebook Live could be better. Um, I guess the participants would be um, recorded either way though. So yeah, the, the commenting yeah. um, and stuff like that. The problem I had with Facebook Live, though, when we went with Trans Performance and we did a lot of ad and a lot of advertising with it, like building up to it, is that we got spammed. We got hit heavy with spam, so to turn off commenting. So what if that happens again and then we have to turn off commenting? That's another issue we had to deal with. So you guys don't have any problems with that? Uh, and who does all your tech stuff over there, Rachel? Is it you? Is it George? Is it somebody else that sets up the like the zoom and the, the stream on the Facebook live. Yeah. George would be a better person to talk to you about all the, the, the backend tech. Okay. Um, Cause it sounds interesting, but. Uh, I guess the, the pro, another pro is that you could participate without being in the room. So you could be a little more anonymous and just participate in the comment in the Facebook comments rather than like be a face on the screen, which wouldn't exist if we just did Zoom. I like the, the engagement possibilities with Facebook. Sorry, go ahead. Daniela. We can also invite people to DM the Northampton Arts Council page if they had questions that they didn't want to post in comment form. And I know at least me and Brian both have ability to see those DMs. We could just read the DM out loud and, and field the questions yeah. um, that way. That's... Does Facebook Live have captions? I know YouTube does, but I don't know if Facebook Live does. I, mean, I can just ask Google. Mm -hmm. That might be another thing we have to think about uh yeah kathy it says can you add you can add captions but i think you have to do it yourself quickly now that you can there's like a <clears throat> can you add captions to facebook live let's see what it says yeah yeah you can i think it says Choose select. Oh, we have to add a file though. There's, it, it's not like it doesn't generate captions like YouTube Live does. So there, that's something that we'd have to talk to George or somebody else that's a little bit more um, tech savvy uh, about live streaming. And I have a couple people I, we work with. Go ahead. I think individual users can turn on captions for live broadcasts. Mm -hmm. I found directions for it. So maybe at the beginning name like if anyone needs captions here's the process to do it and we can share the link yeah in our chat or in a comment um in case people need to turn their captions on um that sounds good and you know i'm willing to talk to people to figure out the, the thing so let's determine whether are we going to do zoom and invite everybody public on the zoom and then do a, a workshop like that or are we going to get some people are we gonna get like, are we gonna do a Zoom Facebook Live hybrid? Or are we gonna do, do Facebook Live? So that's the question I'm putting to the board right now. Um, what do you guys think? I guess one of the questions I have is, 
is, you know, based on the number of people we had at the last information session, how many people do we think we're, you know, are going to be tuning in, right? I mean, because I think that, you know, if we think we're going to, I mean, what did we have last time? What was, do you remember what the number of people was? Was it like somewhere around 30? That was the number I had in my head. Yeah. yeah. It was about 30. So, you know, if we have 30 people on a Zoom conference call, is that, you know, I, I myself have not been on anything that large. So I don't know how manageable that is and if that's more desirable. I mean, because I get what you're saying about the interactive piece. I think that there's, there's something really positive to say about that. But I don't know about the numbers. The 30 people on a Facebook, like, uh, I mean, a Zoom call seems pretty, Zoom. yeah, it seems pretty like, you know, it could get unruly for sure. It's, um, we would have the opportunity to mute all participants except for the speaker. And then, so basically the, the structure, if it's like last year, it could be um, like an MCC presentation, a Northampton Arts Council presentation, and then an opening it up for questions. And it would basically just be at that point that someone could okay. enable their microphone and come on screen. Um, I, I don't think it would be totally unruly, but I think you're right that we would have to prepare to like lay down the framework and the rules so that yeah. it's not just like a, a sea of, of tech issues. So what do we think? Zoom, Facebook Live, or hybrid? Well, is it, does one of them make it easier to have the, to to rebroadcast or to, to put it on, you know, to have it available for other people? I mean, would that require doing it through Facebook? No, you, I'm recording this meeting now because I have to post it after because it's a public meeting. So it's easily done by Zoom as well. And we could just, I basically, you know, it, it encodes it after and then I post it to YouTube as a unlisted link and then I post it to our blog so people who are looking for it can find it. So um, that would be the same as uh, if we did a workshop. That could be so the reason. Way. So the reason for Facebook doing the Facebook pieces is to get to that larger audience. Is, is that am I correct? Is that what the, the rationale is? Yes, it's like we already have engaged participants on Facebook. And then, uh, like Rachel said, um, that's you don't need Facebook like an account to watch it. You don't need it. Like you need a Zoom account to jump up on Zoom. You need to download their application. You can just go to a, a browser and watch the Facebook Live. I have to just put the link up and you click on the link and you can just watch it. With Zoom, you have to like download Zoom on your phone or your tablet or your computer, install it, create an account, find the link that we have up there. It's a little bit more, there's a little bit more, more steps to do it. Um, yeah. but um, one thing I'm not sure about is if somebody watches the, the live stream and doesn't have Facebook, whether or not they can type in questions. I'm not sure. I don't think they can. So we would need a workaround for that. We could use the email address. Yeah. If you have a question or, or like, you know, yeah, I'm not going to put my, but I'm thinking like a text, maybe you can like create like a, a Google voice number or something that people can text questions to or something. Call in. Call in. Oh, no. <laughs> too many, too many things. Email, just tweet us, direct tweet. I don't know. <laughs> but email would work, I think, you know, the arts at or the arts grants, whatever we decide. Um, I think another point in favor of at least hybrid with Facebook, maybe like Zoom plus Facebook, um, is the the point that we can add captions. Because if we're just on Zoom, we actually don't have the ability to add captions. Oh, that's right. True. So we'd have to play recording, add the recording to YouTube, and then the YouTube recording could have closed captions. So we will have it eventually. But if someone did want to participate live, we could give those instructions out. Um, at the outset and in theory people who don't have audio or can't hear can um can participate live uh we should do some 
more research on the Facebook Live thing. But yeah, I so it'd be, the, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I also just want to know how I take the stream key from Zoom and then put that into Facebook Live, and then if it's possible to do the closed captioning with the restreaming thing, because um, it might be like I, I haven't looked at what you just sent yet, Danielle. It might be it would only be able to do like. Uh, if it, the stream originated in Facebook, but I'll I'll ask questions to some people that know more than me. Is a uh, rule of thumb I use a lot, and uh, I feel like our friends at the cinema have already thought this through. Yeah, and then, so I just want to see. All of well, I'm gonna. That's process. who I'm gonna talk to. to George, like yeah. like Rachel said, and I'm gonna talk to Dave, that was like the stream guy at the Northampton Open Media. Those are my two points of information, just so I feel comfortable with like. Um, marketing and putting out something that we can actually that is as capable we're capable of handling because I don't want to have to like schedule those guys to be there but you know once somebody teaches me something I can I'm pretty good at tech stuff so as long as I just feel comfortable with it I'll be good to do that um, so that'd be good to have a so it'd be a closed zoom of like the participants that are speaking so and and then we would be streaming to Facebook live so then we would have to be, all of us would have to be on Facebook live page, just watching the comments and people asking questions and stuff, right? Yeah. And we could put um, the email address in, like be the first comment so that as the video continues to get shared, people can continue it as well. Um, I just hope we don't get spam. Maybe I won't do any like Facebook ads or something like that for the that particular workshop and we'll just use our like you know our email marketing and use our facebook group and i won't do any paid ads because maybe that's how i got transperformance flagged by spammers um i think also i don't know what their hours are like but we could i mean maybe we could have pete moderate the facebook live and watch for questions and also participate in the zoom and he could just like drop questions in the chat for us or chime in with questions for us or any board member like any one of us could make that be our role yeah yeah that's you know i can ask peter like you know i can ask if he's available whatever you what do you whatever you think and you know we'll just it's not mandatory but i think at least three people should be there uh from the board to to field questions about i just did people pitch you their projects last time yeah, so one thing that will be missing is the like informal conversations that happen after everyone like gets up out of their seats and some people leave and some people linger and um, so we'll be missing a, a, a bit of that, but I think we just need to keep extending the invitation to send an email. Yeah, it's always there. The, 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 the extent ask questions is always there and I definitely feel a lot of questions. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there is like a virtual equivalent to like lingering in a room. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh. so I will, so we have Wednesday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Um, let me just double check to make sure I'm available for that. I think that's great because then we can yep. use um, the next board meeting to review what the workshop will entail in case there's any ad additions. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine there will be because, you know, uh, the large part of the workshop is to communicate the Northampton Arts Council's priorities. Um, and I think we, as Brian mentioned, we're going to have to give some additional guidance as to what the priorities are in the times of COVID. Um, so I think we'll have to be pretty clear about um, where, where in the like these application questions that we cannot change where we're expecting to see some response as to how, how these events are going to be tailored to be accessible um, or be delivered virtually this year. Mm -hmm. I just feel like somebody could apply to every single LCC for the same project, which already happens. And then, um, and then just stream one event. Uh, so I don't know how we get around that. Uh, so 
anything else we need to discuss about the grant round? Oh, the guidelines. I thought I like I, you guys can read the notes, but I I thought that we should if you receive usually one of the priorities is that you cannot get funded in some consecutive rounds, but we didn't have an RTZ 2020 grant round. We did the COVID relief. And I, I thought I took it upon myself and I said, you, you know, you're eligible even if you receive COVID-19 relief. Um, I don't know if everybody's in, in, uh, okay. So definitely read the guidelines. Mm -hmm. I, sh I think I shared it with the board or just the grant committee, but I'll share it with the bigger board and everybody should make some comments on that. Um, it's very similar to the ones we did last year. Um, so, and thanks Rachel for typing all those notes up from, from Esther. Uh, that's really nice of you. Um, so we can incorporate that. That will help us guide it with guidance in the workshop. Uh, any questions about the grant round? I'll keep everybody up to date. And uh, once I hear anything from the MCC, I'll definitely share that with the grant committee. If um, if grants are due November 15th, will it be our December meeting that we review? Yeah, we'll have to figure that. We only, we have till February 16th to make decisions. Oh, okay. So it's a different time frame. So we can either wait till January or we can do, you know, review in December and then allocation in January if we want to take a break in between the holidays. So we can talk about that in like the the... October, I mean, uh, October or the November board meeting, we can figure out what we want to do mm -hmm. for that. We can have like a Chris, we can have a ham, Christmas ham or something. Mm -hmm. like um, because I'm new to ink rather than the LCC board, mm -hmm. can you remind me, do ink members vote on the grants or no, right? Uh, you can vote, yeah, because we invite you in to do, to do so. Wait, how is that possible? Oh, that's right. Uh, we maybe. <laughs> I, I don't think it's possible. I think, the, you know, you're either on the municipal board and participating, you know, as part of that or you're not. But she but in the past, Inc. members have presented grants. Well, uh, that may be. I don't know whether that's kosher or not, but they're not. They shouldn't be voting. OK. In other words, as I, I assume there's nothing wrong if you want to volunteer to present, but I don't think somebody who's not officially part of the municipal board, you know, should be discussing and voting. They can't yeah. vote. Yeah. So what? The, so we really need to have our new members in place. Right? Yeah. Because oh. it's right. I mean. I, Otherwise, I'm, if I'm thinking about it, it we're going to have like four people voting on the grants. Like, five, it's not really yeah, good from five an... or four, yeah. So voting <laughs> is, are you talking, are, Stephen, are you talking about scoring and voting the same thing? Yes. The, the scoring, if it's presented to anybody, is a vote. Mm hmm so, but there's actually no, so I just want to like, just the, the only actual vote is the grant allocation. Uh, That's I, the only real vote that happens is when we allocate the money on the grant, everybody ratifies the vote. When we're scoring grants, it's different than voting. I, I see what you mean, but I think that's really a gray area. I'm not sure that that's uh, a legitimate interpretation are you worried about is there like a conflict of interest that you're seeing overlap between municipal and voting on grants i'm sorry i'm not sure i understand the question um is is there are you are what is the like what is the concern about having ink board members do the charting of the votes when you say charting of the votes you mean registering their scores Scoring the votes. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear your last comment, Danielle. Yes, scoring. Uh, you know, to me, scoring is is voting, and, and it's. Uh, I'm not sure that it's a kosher interpretation to say that the only vote is to approve. I mean, 
you know, that would be like somebody participating, you know, in a discussion uh, a, about a matter for the municipal board and indicating a preference, but then, you know, not uh, being registered on the final vote or something like that, which I don't think is proper. Well, you know, how I'm interpreting it, Stephen, is that the Inc. Uh, board member is influencing the opinions of the municipal board members and the municipal board members are the ones that are, 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 are going to be voting on the allocation and everybody agrees on it. And it's a vote. It's just like a, a, a constituent asking the municipal person on the board to do something that they want. So I, I how, how is that not a, how is that's my interpretation of what would be scoring versus voting. Right. Um, and I, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm not sure that it's um, proper in that context for people to be participating in the discussion and influencing others, you know, in that direct process. I understand what you're saying about, you know, whether uh, anybody from the community could register uh, comments or opinions in a public uh, comment portion of a meeting, but yeah. those people would not necessarily be expected to participate in the actual floor discussion of something that was going to be voted on. But they're, but they're still having their opinion made. I don't want you to conflate scoring and voting because it's not what's happening. It's like you got to use the correct terminology. So when we're scoring grant applications, there's no voting happening. There's I, people I registering their preference of, of things. The scoring system was created by the LCC. It wasn't created by the MCC. Um, I think this bears important clarification. I think we would need to be careful about this because, you know, if we're wrong, it's going to invalidate the process. I, I'm, I, I agree. I think there should be more clarification. And I'm not saying whether you're wrong or right, but I'm telling you how I, I'm interpreting the way uh, we've done it. And I could be wrong, but we should definitely add, clarify. But I definitely I wanted, think, what was that? I just wanted to point out that Kathy wrote in the chat as well, and she can't chime in. So she writes, we can influence, but when it comes down to the actual vote itself, itself, perhaps we need to verify or seek MCC guidance. So I think the actual vote itself, Kathy, type in if I'm understanding wrong, you're, are you talking about the allocation when you're distributing the funds in the second meeting or the scorecards? She says, well, it comes down to score. Right. <clears throat> there, there's no guidance from the MCC regarding how we determine who gets what money. We get allocated money and then people apply and then we pick how much each one gets. That's the, the simplicity of what the MCC registers. I feel like the LCC here has created a, a system that's very uh, helpful and is more equitable and everybody scores, whether they're on the LCC or not. And in the past, all the LCC members were on the, the ink board as well, if I wasn't, if I'm not, if I'm not, I'm not incorrect, right? So everybody participated. So the only actual vote that is recorded is in when we, how much money we give to what applicant. And that's what I put into the state Thing. This is how I, 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 my, the process from it as an administrator now as a director and I'm administrating this process, the vote that we actually do is we vote on how much money each particular applicant and which ones we deny. That's the only vote I see. The scoring is to me is not part of voting. The scoring is creating preference of who gets money and who does not get money. But again, I'm going to seek MCC guidance. I'll talk to, I'll talk to Mina about it as well. Um, yeah, let us know what you find out because uh, yeah. I've always interpreted it differently, but you know, that's not because I've, I had from the MCC or LCC. Yeah, I, I never yeah. registered. No, they don't get the score sheets. Those, those numbers, I have them all. Uh, every single one I've ever participated in, I have all those scores. They're part of my, my files, but they don't ever ask for them, nor do, do, is there a process where they like, I feel like every LCC does it differently. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how they do it. But we, we're very uh, transparent on how we do it. If you look on our, you know, how we vote, we, 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 we um, tell everybody how it happens, but other LCCs don't do that. Well, I, I don't know that there's any other equivalent 
where there's a, a, an ink board and a municipal board? There are, there are. Cambridge for sure has that. Um, no, every LSCC does not have an ink board, Danielle. Only the really, uh, really uh, robust ones and special ones do, but like, you know. So I, I wanna go back to a question that I thought Danielle asked Stephen about what's the conflict that you see? Is it that, that, that ink board members who are not on the LCC are therefore not part of the, not, not um, uh, part of the organization that's distributing the funds, is that? That's correct. If, okay. if you're not a member of the municipal board, you would have no- uh, right. uh, Your scores wouldn't one, count. Sorry? You're, you wouldn't be able to score the, the applicants. Well, you wouldn't be able to, to, to vote. Uh, on any matters before the municipal board. And I guess the question is- Absolutely. Is scoring voting? Yeah, that's the question, right? Is scoring voting? And that's the question I'll ask uh, and ask for guidance from Nina. But I think it's, because it's our guidelines and we define them, that's, I feel, I, I think she's gonna put the question to us. But again, I think the, yeah, but I'll ask, I'm gonna ask about is scoring voting, um, isn't it only our guidelines in the spring? No, we actually have, uh, hold on, my connection's unstable. We have to post um, priorities and guidelines for our LCC in the fall as well. So there's, uh, um, what's going on with the internet? Hello, check, check, check. Right. Am I, am I fuzzy? Go closer to the router. Yeah. Yeah, we I can't hear or see anybody. Hold on. Let me try this. Uh oh. There you Back. are. All right. I don't know. They just Zoom just restarted on me. Mm -hmm. Um. And so Brian Caffey service wrote in. It's complicated, but if a disgruntled person asked, they could look at the score papers and ask about people who are not officially on the MCC board. And so I think that is a good point because if you go on the LCC page for each municipality it lists who the lcc board members are mm -hmm. and all of the um all of our inc members would not be listed there it, it would be like kind of an invisible board to to the outside looking in um so i think it yeah i think it is a question for the mcc it's maybe it's like an advisory board i don't know if they've yeah well the, the 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 way the city told us we can only have two on each. But again, I, I'm like, it's the question is about scoring and not voting. Uh, you're frozen again visually, Brian. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'm trying to jump on my, uh, my, come on. Um, I wonder if there's a way for us to even just define it as part of our process, right? And name that the ink board is part of the evaluation, like as folks that have like a long history and understanding of how the Arts Council works and understand our community, they're going to help in the evaluation process of these applications. And then like we and then um, we as long as we define it and make it clear so that if people do ask, I don't it's obvious it's, to I them. Don't it's, it's up to us ultimately. Considered voting or not. Okay, I'm like so far behind with this. 
<laughs> no, we, we didn't uh, say all that much. All right. So, think... yeah. Steve, so Steve and Kathy, have you not submitted scores in, in past rounds? I'm sorry, what was the question? Have you not submitted scores in past rounds? I, I personally, since I've been on the ink board, have not participated in the fall grant round because I assumed that it was improper. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will grant cycle. I'll look into it. I think there's questions everybody has. Um, to, me, to me, it seems like the scoring would be similar to voting. I mean, certainly get the answer from the people, but scoring is how we get a result of the people that we've been a lot to. So like you're kind of like voting for something and then like the details are getting worked out. Okay, so like kind of like, you know, you vote for a law and then the details get worked out. Yeah, so like that would, that's just my two cents. Like it's more close to a vote than not close to it is my point. Well, yeah, because it's a two-stage vote, really. The first vote right. determines. Right, you know, you're allotting two results of something else. So, right. you know, but I would certainly defer to the Puba from the state, so. So Brian, you'll consult the Puba. Yeah, I'll try to find one of those. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, and I'll look. There's, you know, there's lots of stuff online. And uh... okay, so I have a question. So, in the event that the board, that the MCC throws it back to us, as as Danielle is suggesting, are we are we saying that we're okay? You know, if it turns out not to be a legal issue, because then it's a matter of our decision, right? If the MCC says if it's part of your process, it's okay. Are we then saying that's what we want to do? Have MC have have ink board members be able to evaluate? I, I'd be open to that if we did what Danielle suggested, which is to just make it really clear what our process is on the website. I think, I mean, listen, not to take it a step further, but to take it a step further, mm -hmm. like we we have a really few number of people that are involved in this process compared to the number of applications. Um, if it's up to us to define the process, I wonder if we could have like honorary grant reviewers. Maybe not at this point in time, maybe not for this grant round, but for the future, if we invited like an esteemed arts administrator or community member to be part of the evaluation round. I think that without necessarily joining the board, we've talked about creating multiple pathways for people to participate in what we do. And this is a huge part of what we do. And it's like a place where there's actually a lot of power that can be shared. So, um, I, I mean, again, like the legal question will determine what we are and aren't allowed to do, but if we are, are allowed to invite more voices into the process, I think that that would be ideal. I, I personally would be much more in favor of getting the desired number of people on the board, because I think that process is one which, you know, I'm sure you've all seen, requires a good bit of experience to do well. I think it requires an understanding of, you know, where we're coming from and what the background is and, and what's gone into developing the guidelines for a particular round. And I think anybody who's brought in may certainly have expertise in the arts, but will not have any kind of uh, depth of experience with the arts council or necessarily, you know, with the community. That's my concern. I, so I know what you mean about uh, being shorthanded. And I think, you know, that's definitely a consideration, but I, I think it's more important, especially in the long run, to address that by having more members. Uh, everybody frozen or did I just leave you all speechless? No, I'm just, I'm just going over the L L LCC thing to see whatever, what a voting meaning me means. So I agree. I agree. We should, I'm trying to get as many people on the board as possible. It's just the, the city councils, they didn't have two meetings. Like they've missed two meetings and we have three people and uh, 
right? Mm -hmm. I, to come I, on. I'm saying uh, part of what I'm saying for what it's worth uh, is based on the fact that historically everybody did vote, you know, before we developed this system of scoring, mm -hmm. everybody was involved with the discussion on each grant that was presented and then a vote. So historically, you know, I think it can be argued that the scoring was simply a modification of what used to be a much more elongated process of voting and discussion. So that was, well, A, there is either only an LCC when you were doing that, and B, there was an LCC, and then all the people in the LCC was also were also on the ink board, Stephen. So that those that you know, I just like it's a little bit more it's a little bit more nuanced now, I think, because the conditions have changed. Right, and but I don't think the conditions have changed with regard to what the city would consider uh, sort of legal and proper with regard to participation on a municipal board. So we all had a particular understanding because basically they were the same thing except in name. You know, we, we, we were forced by the city and the solicitor, you know, to divide and we, we got around. Oh, actually, let me take that back. We decided to divide and have the ink board so that we could apply for certain grants and have the nonprofit existence. For a long time, that was just a, a, a mirror of the municipal board. But that mm -hmm. changed when we were pressed, you know, to divide it further. And we don't need to go through all of that. Yeah, but, yeah. So I know what you mean, but I, I do think it's, um, it, we need to clarify it. So all, you know, I, I, I just looked over the LCC stuff and I think it could be argued either way is how I think, think about it. They don't say anything about um, mm -hmm. members. They just say members, quorum, public open meeting law, voting meeting. So I think what happened when our LCC decided to split up the, the voting because we had so many applications into a scoring and a voting round, they effectively um, turned the voting meeting only into the allocation because there's only a vote that is recorded. And what I put into the LCC, uh, um, the, when, I, when I'm uploading stuff to the state, it's either who was at the meeting, okay? Who attended the meeting? It's either attended or not attended. And then which grant got what amount of money? So I'm effectively suggesting my interpretation is like I said before, is that the voting, which is like suggesting to the LCC what we should fund and the top scores is, is are just preferences from community members and the LCC on what is uh, reflective of the, the best of the best that we consider the most eligible to, to, to vote. And then the allocation meeting, there's a there's a lots of discussion, it's recorded. And then people basically det determined by the preference of our community, they vote on how much money they wanna give each particular uh, grant. That's my interpretation. Again, I think I can talk, I'll talk to MCC for clarification, but I, that's how I've interpreted it. Um, I I understand that, and I guess, and I, I don't want to go on and on about this, but what I think is important here is that there are two issues. One is with regard to the MCC, and one is with regard to the city. And I'm not eager to open this up as a question for Alan Seawald, but on the other hand, you know, at a certain point, we may need some clarification that way. What does the city have anything to do with state money? Like there, it's because because we are a municipal board, and there are questions of what is sort of proper and acceptable with regard to deliberation and voting of any municipal board. Okay. And and I'm not happy about that, but I also don't want to be on the wrong side of it. Okay. So I'll ask uh, for I'll I'll ask for clarification from our uh, LCC program officer. And then if it gets, if it's uh, more, I need to have another discussion with Alan Seawald, my least favorite person that works for the city, I will have that discussion. I understand. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know this. Brian. What? <laughs> um, I'll come with you. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's just usually like very quick, terse emails. But um, so moving forward, I will ask for clarification on this. We're going to try to get more board members. 
And then we'll have to do what we have to do to, uh, if we have to have two review meetings and uh, instead of just one to review the, board, the, the grants, then we're gonna have to do that if we don't have enough members, but we have three on deck. So that's, that's eight if we count Esther, if we call it, if we get Esther out of like uh, maternity leave. Um, and then I would make, I, I think, can we, you think it's okay if we invite, if the, whatever, we'll get a ruling from, I'll talk to, I have more stuff to talk to Lisa and, and meet and, about. And you know, for, for what it's worth, uh, I would be more, I am not that concerned that a small number of board members might be making the decisions and voting. I trust all of you and all of us uh, implicitly with making good decisions that way. I think it's, in this case, it's more a question of what is the burden gonna be if there are so many grants that need to be presented by a small number of people. That's, I think, what's a really onerous burden. Yes. And that's why I'm trying to uh, address this right now. Yes, we have three board members in wait, correct. Um, and they're gonna have a crash Man. course in grant round for sure. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we just like go back and we draft people who like you know recently left you know the board just like call them back into service yeah. we could yeah but i think that's <laughs> one of the reasons why they don't want to come back to service <laughs> we just like show up at george's door hey george well, <laughs> george is on the, the ink but he... <laughs> go ahead danielle <laughs> wouldn't it be perfectly above board to have multiple people present yeah, even fine. if only I mean I hate that I think that's like a waste of ink members times so like I think if they're going to present and read hundreds of applications they should be able to vote on them it's um, not voting it's scoring let's get the terminology okay, right sorry. please it's scoring grants it's numbers you're writing down numbers you're not voting for anybody for president okay Brian, I, you know, I, I hate to be argumentative, but to me, it is a vote. It's not a vote. You're putting three numbers down. It's preference. Preference is not, it's like. What is voting if it's not a preference? You're, you're, it's I zero mean, or one when you vote. You're not doing zeros and ones on this. It's not checkbox and no checkbox. It's not yes or no when we're, we're scoring. That's why Stephen's it's not voting. Go ahead, please, sorry. The presentation of the applications even without scoring could also be a vote because if they're presented well in leading manners with affirmations, you're suggesting support. And if they're presented as, I had some apprehension as I was reading this application, then it's also being skewed, right? So then, I mean, by, by your logic, Stephen, it seems as though the ink possibly should not be at all involved in the process, which makes it seem as though it's, it's not gonna be, we don't have the bandwidth. Right, I understand, and that's that's part of why I have not been involved since I've been on the ink board with the municipal board process in the grant rounds. I understand. Um, I mean, just like maybe I'd like to put a thing in it, like let's just you know, I think we all like know what the issue is, and Brian, like you clear whatever hurdle you you know by talking to the you know the grant poo that we need to talk to, mm -hmm. and you know at least we, we've covered our bases and we addressed the concerns that everybody has. I mean, you could see it both ways. Like, I think Steve, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you're kind of like saying, hey, this is more like kind of like ranked voting than, than not voting at all. And others, and Brian's saying, no, it's scoring. And so like, but I think all are valid, but it's, you know, let's get like the person saying, yeah. hey, th it's this, and then, you know, and then we can all safely move on. Okay. I will do that. All right, any other grant round questions or concerns? Besides, we don't have the bandwidth to, to, to do it all. So, so uh, the question that I have is, so we are at, at still at the point where our committee at least has to come up with some new um, language about acceptable projects, right? We still are, that's still something that we have to tackle. Yeah, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my email back from the MCC. So I'm gonna harass them tomorrow to make to go on a call. And uh, um, yes, I, I oh no, I just have a quick like if the actual, you know, to get through the actual like you know the actualities of it. Are we like when we do the actual scoring and such? You know, I can just see you know usually that takes like what like we're there for like three hours in the in four the hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I could see it on Zoom or something just taking all the much longer. So like, how, like, how do we, is there any way, like, how do we efficiently run this job? We can't, I don't think the, the way mm. I just read the program uh, guidelines, the yeah. one that I just linked right here, which is the most recent one, we have to meet in person. The LCC guidelines, it says you cannot phone in votes. You cannot uh, email in votes. You have to be in person for open meeting. Uh, yeah. I think you should get yeah, I would be like an exception. Yeah. In a pandemic. Yeah, but I'm just telling you that that's what they have posted. That's what it says. Right. So maybe no, I'm it's just, I'm... now, and until they change it, like we'll we'll be out of compliance. That's all I'm saying right now. They haven't updated it. Right. Um, Danielle, Eamon was just saying that um, holding the the grant meetings over Zoom could go on forever and ever, <laughs> or it could be a very long meeting. And how can we? Um, how can we make that process more efficient virtually? And then Brian was raising the point that uh, they we haven't made updated the guidelines. I mean, I would be surprised if they didn't say for a pandemic, it's fine to do it in a non-traditional way. And so, you know, I come back to the question, like, you know, we can think about it or whatever, but like, how do you mitigate how long that could possibly take? You know, the things that spring up most, like, do we break it up over, days which could be like more onerous or like is it possible to have um the like the presentations in advance and so when we're actually on the zoom we can just like go through and score like just something you know because if it takes three or four hours in person we would be here all day yeah. <laughs> on zoom so just thinking you know planting that seed like how can we address that kind of issue well, I wonder if we're defining the process, if everyone has to score every category, or if we get up subcommittees score specific categories. Oh, and then, all the, L the LCC board members that are in attendance have to score every grant. Okay. Okay. We, right now, unless there's new guidelines that they come out with, we have to meet in person. I'm sure that's going to change. And I, I think like what most things in our state right now, we're waiting for a lot of guidance from Boston and it's not coming fast enough. So um, I will schedule a call. I will bring up the guideline thing about how we're going to meet. And it would be my preference if we, if we had 70 applications again this year that we split it up into two hour chunks for review, whether we're doing Zoom or in person, because mm -hmm. when we hit hour three and we have to still present grants, I feel like those are the grants that do not get the same kind of uh, focus and attention as the other grants. This has been point. discussed before in the, in the past. And I feel like two hours is good enough attention span for volunteers and people to either be on video like this or to be in a room discussing people's art grants. So that would be my preference if we did you know, two hours one night and the next night we did another two hours. And, uh, you know, and we can do our split over what we think into two nights so we have more focused attention. And I think it doesn't matter if we don't have to do category by category, we can just do it all over the thing and just go to different people and we can figure that all out. Um, we do have some time to, to, to discuss um, the process of that, Eamon, though, because we, we don't have to do a review until December or January. So um, the, we have to let everybody know by February 16th with this one. So we do have time to figure out a process on how to review, vote and review, score, present. Um, and hopefully everybody should go find some new board members. We need some more. Uh, so get out there and recruit some, uh, any more questions about grant rounds? Wait, does Kathy have anything to like, oh, um, I just wanted to mention that, uh, I can imagine it moving okay on Zoom if um, you know we stick to the three minute timer and the presenters share their screen. And yeah. so the presenters cue the excerpts that they wanna share. Um, that actually is quicker than asking for it to be queued, um, but it would take a different kind of preparation to, to have that all ready to go. Um. If we're not allocating until February 16th, does that mean that we're going to push our spring grant round back a few months? Uh, 
Mm, I don't see why. It's for the same time frame. For January to, to, to December, that this this the money that we're allocating or like deciding on this fall and is gonna be for the 2021 and then the spring grant round if we even have money to allocate to the spring we'll see how first night goes um will be from july 1st to, to june 30th okay. 2022 so i think it still fits um and so i think we should be do you know i do Um, uh, any other questions about the grant round besides that we need a lot of questions to ask the uh, can ink meeting I'm adding notes to the can ink board score uh, LCC grants Um, there's a lot of things to figure out. I'll make sure I'll get a call with the, uh, LCC again this week. And, uh, I'm going to try to join their meeting on Friday, uh, and get some more, um, thoughts from them. And yeah, I'm worried that they haven't updated a lot of their website stuff yet. It's September 22nd. It opens October 1st. What so meeting are they having Friday? Oh, uh, they usually have that cultural district one on Friday, but I'll look into it. Um, Luis, Luis Coto. September 24th. Oh, it's Thursdays now. It's Thursdays now. He changed. The 1030 Thursday. Do you want me to send you the link? Sure. The cultural district check-in. I don't know if you're on the cultural district committee. Um, other grant round questions? If you think of somebody that would be good for our board who lives in Northampton, Florence or Leeds, um please invite them rachel did you get, ever get any um did you ever get kicked off the board for leaving think, town from it i think you told me it happened but i never actually heard from city hall but i think maybe you can still be on our board i'm gonna double check that that might be helpful um we also have um pre-baked language which i think Brian, me, Kathy, and Ellen had a thread going about as our outreach committee. So there is language if maybe Brian or I can share it with everyone um, to send out if you wanted to just solicit emails from people who might be interested in the board. Oh, I got some, uh, I, got, I just got an email from Mina Kim about the, the questions I asked. You guys want them? Sure. All right. I'm just going to post them in the, I'll just copy and paste them into the, into the chat right now. Oh, it's too much for, to, to copy and paste. Let's see if I can get. Everyone. Applicants must reside or be located in Massachusetts. Caption should be provided for live streaming.
Okay, so that's the question. Some of the questions. I'll email or I'll, I'll, I'll schedule a call for the rest of the stuff. So we, we can incorporate that into, and I'll, I'll forward that email to the grant committee and we can kind of incorporate that into some of our work that we have to do on the guidelines and stuff. All right, we got 824. Um, what else we got here? Um, are we feel like we've, we've gone over that enough so far? If there's any questions, you can email me. Um, and then the grant subcommittee will work on uh, updating the guidelines and getting the information that everybody we talked about here. So, um, got it. Um, thanks, Danielle. Is it also, does it come up when the, in the, the, the video, when it, it doesn't come up in the video, does it? When I like, when it encodes, it doesn't, yeah. But I'll save it. Um, so the next uh, piece on the, is board membership and we have three board members in waiting, uh, Michael Abitello, Kent Alexander and Ashlyn Kratik. Um, they'll be probably, hopefully they'll, they'll be um, approved at the next city council meeting and then they have to get sworn in. So hopefully that's good. And um, there are some other people that uh, we reached out to and supposedly the, the they never got their applications and um i was emailing about that again i i circled back around with the mayor's office about um some other people um and that was uh these four people that i'm gonna paste in here vic kazeda gina kim pete binkowski or allison bland and the mayor's office says they didn't receive any applications from any of them. So hmm. I don't know what. One of them submit an application. What'd you say? But I know at least one of them did submit an application and I asked right. them to read it and they, they are in the process, but I think it's like, it's a barrier, right? When they're up. Uh, but like, I'm thinking of like how many applications of board membership have been lost by the system or they're not, are they screening them? And not, I like, I don't know what's happening, but like, I don't think court's doing anything with it. I just think that it's just old software that the IT place is using and are just like, something's getting lost and it's really frustrating and nobody will look into it. So I just have to just, and I like, I did sound off on court and I felt bad about it, but um, I don't know if he wants to do any more work with IT. I wanted the IT and mayor's office to get on it to figure it out, but I'll bring it up again in my mayor's meeting and hopefully he can work on it. Um, yeah, there are a number of vacancies and like Kathy, like if the stupid computer system is losing people's applications, like what's going on, you know? That's a lot of people, those vacancies should be filled by now. Um, so that's the update on board membership. And then I think we have one officer nomination this evening. And uh, I think there is gonna be a nomination for a board chairman because we don't have one. We haven't had one in a bit. So does anybody wanna make a, a nomination for a board chairman? I would love to, but I think I'm not allowed. Right, That's I'm right. on the ink. That's right. So, Freeman, do you have a nomination on the LCC? Well, I would certainly be inclined to nominate uh, Danielle. New As board chairman? Board. Yeah. Ch Danielle, do you accept the nomination? I accept contingent upon our using gender inclusive terminology for our oh, chair. Oh, chairperson, my, my, my apologies. Yes, I, Chair, yes. Chairperson. I, uh, <laughs> I will change that. <laughs> uh, uh, so do you uh, approve? Do you want to be the chairperson? Uh, yes, so I can we have a, can somebody move to for a vote? So it has to be Eamon Freeman or uh, Danielle. So it has to be Eamon or Freeman. Do you move to vote? I do. 
Okay, second, Eamon. All in favor? You can vote for yourself, Danielle. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so Danielle is our chairman, <laughs> chairperson. Sorry, I gotta get it out of my head. Chairperson. Uh, I'm excited about it. So congratulations. Thanks. I second this, but I cannot. <laughs> Kathy. Um, Kathy. <laughs> um, so that's exciting. It's nice to have a chairperson again. Uh, I, we still have vice president is Esther still, uh, even though she's on maternity leave. So that's good. And then we're just missing um, a treasurer right now because Kathy had to move off the uh, the municipal board due to her, um, she's on the disability commission, I believe now, or the council on aging. Um, so she couldn't be on two boards simultaneously. So she is the treasurer of our ink board. Uh, and then, uh, she's not on there. So I'm going to be looking for a treasurer soon. So, um, we can talk about that at the next meeting. Um, so thanks everybody. Any more thoughts about that? The, on the board membership? I did drop um, a board recruitment email into the chat. I think everyone has access to it, but if you don't, just let me know. You could really easy copy paste that and send it out to your networks. Um, and then Brian, I wonder if we could also just do a solicitation email to our listserv with like adapt to this language and email everyone and say if you can join, join. Uh, okay. Um, I can, how about we reach out to our arts, our, our artists that are already engaged in, as opposed to like our audience that I sell tickets to. Um, so it's a little bit, yeah, we should, we should do that. So we should do, um, I'm going to make a copy of the, that board recruitment, board recruitment, email, wider audience, and then I'm going to share it with the same people and then I'll work on that. Um, so we can have that and we can make sure that people know that you have to live in, yeah, residency. Okay, that's, yeah, so we'll work on that. Oh yeah, Ellen had uh, regrets tonight, even though she is a non-voting member, she's ex officio or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to get some more people on our board. We, um, lost, we lost a lot of people this year. Brian, Kathy wrote in the, um, that the, Muni, the municipal board also needs a clerk. Yeah. When can you be back on the Muni board? Yeah, because that's right, because Courtney just left. So yeah, we probably need a treasurer and a clerk. That's probably important. We got a, we got a chairperson now. That's exciting. Um, Do you have an update on the mural for diversity? Yeah, I'm calling everybody and anybody and it's I'm getting really frustrated trying to help them find a place to put it. I called uh, the Vogel, Peter and Steve Vogel that own TD Bank and used to own the faces because I would thought that the two back walls they have there would be perfect. Like the one in the alleyway that's Haymarket next to Iconica. And then there's also one in the Verizon parking lot. That's just like a big white wall with nothing on it. And it'd be great to have a right next to the like beautiful, huge mural in the Verizon building. Um, but they don't want anything up there because their building's for sale and they don't want to sell it. They don't want to have a mural up there uh, when they're trying to sell a building, which is, I think is a crappy excuse. So uh, I, currently they're waiting for emails back from Nourish building, the building that Nourish is in. Um, uh, I tried 33 Holly and they just don't have any, uh, um, stipulations about public art yet and they're waiting for that and it's also a metal building so i talked to lisa thompson and they talked to she she talked to amelia and that's not going to happen there um uh progression hasn't responded the brewery uh, i've recently put them in contact with um familiars because they're looking for a mural 
Uh, so still looking for a open building. Um, maybe I can find, I just thought like there's one mural on one side of Verizon. Maybe there's another blank wall on Verizon that can talk to them. So I'll go walk over there tomorrow and see what their, the rest of the building looks like. Maybe we can put another mural up on their building. They seem to be open the murals there. Um, what about the bike shop in Florence? Wasn't that a possibility for a while off the bike path? Freeman? Can't hear you, Freeman. I went to talk to the folks at Florence Paint and um, they had expressed some willingness to have a mural at some point, but they never ended up getting back. Uh, Amelia sent a very nice proposal. I spoke to them. Um, then I went in and checked to see if they had thought about it. And they, you know, for some reason they're not responsive. So I, that may not be so much because of the mural, although that's a possibility. I, I haven't gone back to check in with them. It may be because they, I don't know if you've looked at, the, if you know the building, but it's grooved uh, exterior. So it would require putting a, bo attaching a board to that, cert that, that wall um, for the kind of mural they want to put there. And that may be the reason that they don't want to go forward because they don't want to consider doing that. But I don't know that yet. Could we cover up the artwork on the west side of the railroad bridge? <laughs> we, yeah, we could just, we can put... <laughs> we, well, how come there wasn't an outpouring to take that down when Wayne put that up? Hmm. There was a, a big hue and cry about it. Believe I know, me. but not by the business community. They all were like, oh, that's great. It's awesome. I like the, the windows uh, paint uh, objects they put up on the bridge. Um, <laughs> Kathy asked about the parking garage. Wasn't, wasn't that um, where the mural was originally going to go? No. It was on, the, I think, a, by the back of Thorns originally, wasn't it? They they have permission to do the back of Thorns, but the cost is prohibitive and the safety issues are a uh, concern uh, because they want to do the back wall over the over the, the entrance in the rear, which is not for for their intents and purposes. It's not uh, it's not a usable space. So I asked, I asked George, you're going to be on the, I texted him, I could come on the board meeting. He's like, oh, I was interviewing a filmmaker. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, he was. We had a Q&A tonight. I'm, I'm so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him a little emoji with like a little, the guy with the little glass like that. Little uh, monocle. Um, so yeah, that's at a stall still and I'm getting frustrated and it feels like it's a, uh, our community is a not in my backyard community right now with public art in general. So I'm getting really frustrated and there's only so much I could do to like ask people and connect them to find a place. So we created a database um, that we started uh, earlier this that can share with everybody of like particular places. If you can, if you know an owner of any of these places, like I'm um, gonna, uh, let me find that really quick. Um, potential mural, mural locations. If you have any information or other ideas, um, please uh, add to this database that I'm going to share with you right now. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so are you aware of anyone's plans or downtown's plans are as it gets colder out to like, you know, I've seen some places they have outside seating and they've like already put like, you know, like a, an event tent and their places. Do you know what other places, uh, what they're planning on doing downtown as far as like, you know, assuming that we also have to like, you know, not be technically inside, but outside, but are they going to have more enclosed outside spaces? So I'm just wondering if that's an opportunity to, you know, think about two or three months from now, there'd be a four or five month period where there'd be more enclosing outside. Maybe we could dress those up a little bit with how I understand all those those uh, barriers that are going to be that are up and that those are little outdoor um, restaurant things in the parking spaces are going to all be taken down by November 15th for plowing purposes. 
Oh, uh, okay. So I don't think that's going to be uh, a feasible thing. I think the only one we're going to deal with is Fitzwillie's. Um, is the only one that maybe have may have some outdoor seating or like uh, Spoleto, but I don't. I couldn't tell you for sure. Um, either yeah. one, what yeah. their plans are. Um, the deck couldn't use propane heaters uh, tonight. Oh, that's interesting. I was at a. I was in my friend does pop up uh, uh, restaurant stuff, and she was at Brass Cat this past weekend. And I went there, and the food was really good, and they had propane heaters outside, and people were socially distanced, and you couldn't go in the bar only to go to the bathroom. It was kind of cool. The food was really good. Her, she does like Filipino street food, and it's really, it's really good. Um, but uh, I was like, this is cool. But it's a really nice space, and it's only special because it's like on Cottage Street, and it's like a perfect little like place to be. But I definitely was cuddled next to the propane heater because it was cold outside. Wow, the fire marshal came by and said, no, no propane heaters on the deck. Wow. Which deck? Uh, the, you know, the bar that's at the union station. Oh yeah. 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 That one. I think that's what none she's talking about. And that's Kathy texting. Um, so get us some board members, find us a, a benevolent building owner, please. Everybody that wants public art. Yes. Brian, I have two questions. What about the what about the two for not two forty one? Uh, the building that has affordable housing that we were thinking of doing some kind of a partnership with, like an artist residency in that space. Yeah, yeah. Off the bike path on Pleasant Street. That's a good idea. Do they have any wall Live space? Fifty five. Uh, I don't think they they maybe do. on. I can look. I can go look. So I will add that to my um thing. That's a good idea. Um. East Hampton has artists and residents. Cool. Um, that, that is cool. And then I also wanted to ask, how are the artists doing that you had to help source for the city streets project or shared streets project? I haven't heard that anything. Stuff about... was like erased. It wasn't erased. It's just under people's cars most of the time now when they're downtown. Um, okay. I haven't I haven't heard anything back from the artists at all. Um, okay. I heard it was good vibes installing all the stuff and they were really happy, but I haven't heard anything besides that. And they knew it was ephemeral anyways, but they didn't know how long. They didn't know how long it was supposed to be up till November 15th, but that's the only thing that is different. And um, yeah, so they're, I haven't heard any feedback yet. So maybe they're so busy that they haven't had a chance to. I don't even know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, public art, that is still an issue right now um and it's definitely frustrating so well that was the next uh thing um did you get to take a did you get a uh, amen on the online communications thing did you get a chance to look at the some of the logos i sent you uh yes and um we should find the time to like to kind of like go over them Cool. And yeah. Uh, yeah, to chat about them. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, well, let's do that. And then what we got, we just talked about the public art thing. Um, Kathy, I think you and Ellen should get together and we should start um, talking about Poet Laureate for next year, if you have time. And if anybody else wants to join that subcommittee um to figure out you know a selection committee for the next poet laureate and start that process that'd be great uh kathy service um because right now i have you and ellen on that subcommittee uh so i don't know if anybody here is interested in the joining the poet laureate subcommittee to help with that search um just let kathy know if our english professor from smith gets to apply to the board i think she would be great yeah that'd be nice god killing me um that's what i have so far on the uh agenda for the missile meeting is uh i'll ask ellen perhaps a name for karen yeah that's a good idea kathy um 
Uh, can somebody move to close the municipal meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Municipal meeting is closed. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to open the ink meeting. Uh, trans performance recap, uh, real quick, because it's 8.44. We probably two, 3,000 views on YouTube Live, 9,000 views on Facebook Live. Uh, we learned a lot from the lesson. We raised almost $20,000, which is really good. Our production costs were much lower. I definitely sent you guys the financials. Um, so I feel like, uh, and also got some of those lovely vibes that night, uh, doing the whole thing with everybody. So it was, I think it was all in all a big success. And it, it, I owe it a lot to our partnership with Northampton Open Media and the tireless work from like Peter and Steven. So um, if you guys get a chance, you send those guys an email or just if you see them or something, just say hi and say thanks. That's You guys did a good job because they did a really good job organizing that event. We had a little bit of glitch in the beginning, but all in all, um, uh, we impressed People's Bank, the vice president who gives us money for first night every year. And um, we they are going to go ahead and support us again this year for five thousand dollars as opposed to ten which i'm completely uh helped like okay with because i feel like we don't we're not gonna have the same engagement as we did last year because it's going to be online um so then i took that as a rule of thumb a marker and i took my all of my sponsor asks and i have them and then i changed it into um uh we're gonna run little like uh, 15 and 30 second spots during the live stream for our top sponsors, which would be like um, People's Bank and whoever, you know, there's other different levels. We're also going to be, I'm going to doing uh, hand screen printed posters that are limited edition for our sponsors. And then we're going to sell those as well. Um, and then little, instead of buttons, we're going to do little like nice lapel pins that are enamel. Um, that are limited edition and then we're gonna give those to our sponsors but we're gonna also sell them at cedar chest and online at cedar chest um, as well so thorns has signed up to do that so those are going to be some different revenue streams um i just started my my sponsor asked to my like email list sponsors today uh and it's already going really well so um i feel like the efficacy of our fundraising event base is still going to fall through and again i think we're going to see less production cost. I also had a two hour meeting last week with um, uh, New England Public Media, which includes PBS, WGBY and uh, uh, NEPR. Um, and they have a new content manager and I met, met with some of their executive committee and I pitched them um, basically the idea of broadcasting first night on PBS and some, some different collaboration and a partnership. And we came out with the idea of like getting like a, a couple of their hosts like Kari Najiri and maybe Tom Rini to do some of the introductions. Um, and then we're gonna take the best of our best content and give it to them as like a package and they're gonna repackage it and kind of like broadcast that on PBS. But anything that they take from us, they're gonna have to like send people to our live stream on New Year's Eve. So there's, we're still working on that. I'm gonna know within the next week or two if they're gonna sign up for that kind of level of involvement. We'll get some of their camera crew and some of their technical advising, but it's going to be able to like really um, uh, take our signal and, and broadcast it to a whole new audience, which will be really great. Uh, so I think right now, go ahead. Um, I've worked with Vanessa Cirillo before. Yeah. Uh, and she was phenomenal as a partner. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm wondering if there's like, if you had, like met with her, talked to her, and th yeah. thought about waiting. Like, I've been working with her for a long time. She was on the she was on the Zoom call as well. Okay, so I just feel like she will find more ways. Like I don't know. I just think she's amazing. And if yeah, yeah, yeah. She and so yeah. so it's it was Vanessa Cirillo, um, a new guy who just got the 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 job six months ago, and then Maria Wechter. And uh, so I've known Maria since I've been in Northampton and then I've known Vanessa since I've been part of the Arts Council. So we, we know they're definitely used to, you know, working with me. 
And then the new guy is like from the DC area, knows nothing about this area. And we just got to get him on board. So that's who I'm waiting because he's the actual content manager. Um, so I'm waiting for, um, for them because I definitely think that, you know, Vanessa and we can come up with more ideas, but what I'm trying to do is the main thing is I want to put our video onto PBS and like on a television station that has a much wider audience than Northampton open media and like our local uh, cable access. If you have any more ideas, Danielle, please, please share. Well, I wonder if Vanessa also does the Valley Story Slam. So I wonder if like a content segment that might make it more attractive to PBS and then like the two of you could co-pitch could be to like feature the top three stories from the previous years or something. Yeah. As like, another thing. I mean, I don't know. I feel like she'll come up with great ideas. That well, she it's, I felt like she was or... deferring to this new guy who I'm, I'm blanking on his name that I just met. And his, his pitch was just to like, package their own programming and then take cherry pick from what we we come up with and then just give us credit and then send people to the live stream on the night of so whether that's where the idea stays because he's the new guy from dc is yet to be seen but i i would love to come up with some my ideas and um around that but there yeah so i gave him some stuff that we've done produced we you know in the past in this year and they seem interested oh, sorry uh, sorry i'm just reading okay i'm just reading kathy's text right now sorry just want to keep up keep up signing off all right bye freeman Thank you. So you, you think tapping into some story slam stuff, but again, we're like, we though that's not the way first night works. Danielle, we like, we basically hire local artists that, and they get paid and then we, they perform. And then, so we'd have to figure out, we'd have to actually, I'd rather like hire, there's like storytellers that we've worked with in the past that we've hired that we would then do the same thing with, you know, or like find some of their, their people. Um, but you're trying to basically use their audience, the story same audience to watch first night, right? I get the, I get the well, crossover. Partner with NEPM to produce some of the segments that happen on first night. So that like the cases that North, like Arts Council and NEPM have co-produced segments on first night and together are offering this entire package to PBS. I don't know. I don't really, I'm, I don't understand what NEPM's model is or why they're aiming to cherry pick. Um, Cause it seems like if it's live, that'll be. They want to produce to their own content so they can use like bigger names cause they have better, a better like network and more money. So they can like get like a bigger artist and then have content sections in theirs. That's like a little bit more um, PBS cause PBS is nationwide, right? They can so, fund artists for our first night, right? No, they, they can't because we're a fundraiser. They can't, that's the other, that's the biggest issue they have is that okay. we're a fundraiser and they can't raise funds for us. And first night is first and foremost, a fundraiser. So that's why they're going to just cherry pick our content and then send people to us. Um, that's how it came out like that. Cause that was the biggest issue that we had right off the bat. And that's, what the gentleman, the new content manager, and I, I'm why I don't know why I'm bl blanking his name, but um, came up with. Kathy so. was suggesting that perhaps Story Slam could have an act on first night, could have a. Oh, slot. there's we already have storytellers, so it's like we could we could. I don't know if we could take the branding from them, like so. We're gonna say like first night presents Story Slam type of thing and they have a partnership with the academy as well but i don't I, yeah that that could work but we have multiple storytellers that tell stories tell stories on first night it's just not branded as a story slam and i don't know if, that would, so yeah. if it is like a special edition one night only story slam you know like if they agree to that we would receive all the promotion that comes with that because they would be promoting their own thing and the only way you can go to it is by buying a first night 
button. But so. then we would get the money and they wouldn't they wouldn't do that. They're very, very protective of Story Slam because I'm I'm on the Academy board and I know mm. they already have issues with how they they they've already separated with the Academy on the Story Slam thing because over revenue difficulties on both sides and the fundraising piece and stuff. Yeah. So I don't see how we can't we couldn't stream their content on ours and they won't they don't want us to be like hosting and like doing stuff that's directly like fundraising for our organization on theirs. Like when I send them, like when they were an underwriter, we can't even like the, the language is so dry that you can send them. It's not even promoting. It's like, you know, like uh, whatever the news is or like, you know, fresh air, Terry gross underwritten by the Northampton arts council presents first night for go to first night.org. You know, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a different, uh, it's, it's hard to, to cross promote mm -hmm. so again if i get more details and i'll I, I, the idea of cross promoting story slam is a good one because it has a really big audience um but i think vanessa is very protective about that uh thing but i'll, I'll ask her about it um, where did the um the twenty thousand dollars raised for trans performance come from was that predominantly sponsorship no, it was mostly, it was a lot of uh, the GoFundMe and the Facebook uh, fundraiser and uh, people just, you know, in PayPal um, the day of, but a lot of it was uh, the long-term GoFundMe and then some of the sponsorship. It's a mix of all of it. Um, it's definitely in the Transperformance financials that I, I shared. And um, we're definitely gonna be doing the same kind of pitch the day of for first night, like asking people, um, and then selling the lapel pins and selling the, the, the posters um, yeah. and then sponsorship. And that's going to have to, to supplement, you know, not selling buttons. Um, so we're going to do the best I can, we can. I'm going to, hopefully we can target like 50,000, but again, the costs are going to be less because I don't have to hire 15 techs. I don't have to hire as many artists. Um, we're not competing with gigging on New Year's Eve because we're going to be basically creating content throughout uh, October and November and December, that's gonna be pre-packaged that we're gonna be running with live stream content that we're doing the day of. Um, and we're gonna be filming a lot of it at uh, 33 Holly in that same workroom space. Um, so that's the plan right now. Uh, I'll keep everybody updated on that. It's gonna be something. <laughs> um, and then for uh yeah so that i i think we're you know i'm i'm confident we're gonna do be really do really well and we're still figuring out i'm just like i'm gonna be caught up on like uh how we're gonna program the website and oh yeah the gazette signed on to do our five page color ad as well which was really big news for me today that was big mm -hmm. um so we got our media partners or hit them open media i'm hoping that uh you know nepm signs on uh in a big way this year and then you know we have the, the gazette people's bank like a lot of the big pieces are still there which i was worried about and it's there everybody's there and which is good and they're signing up for this you know streaming thing so that's good and um just gotta keep on evolving and um being you know reflexive of the times and hopefully we make something good uh, that's kind of the recap on that. On yeah. Well, I mean, well, well done on the fact that the bottom line of trans performance between 2019 and 2020 is like not all that different. It's no. really incredible. So it's cool. like a really awesome fundraising job and managing of expenses job. And I think it just bodes really well for first night. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to need a little bit more tech for first night just to make sure it looks better and I really want more camera because I feel like some of the cinematography could be done much better uh, just because we need more staff on for the shoots, but uh, I'm going to try to find. So if you guys know anybody that is a good camera operator, uh, I'm looking to hire some independent contractors to help us make the shoots look cleaner. So we have a list that, you know, Peter's been putting together, but we know, I'm always looking for new people. So if you're at the cinema or Danielle, anybody like send them my way and then I'll have Peter add them to the list. Um, Cause I just want it to look much more professional. What's up? Right now. What? 
Do you want a recommendation right now? Absolutely. Um, I would reach out to Melissa McClung. Oh, we, I know her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, we give her grants all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Um, let me make sure that Peter has this, her contact. So I don't forget because Peter McClellan, another, she's really good. Um, I'm working with Henry Amistadi, an East Hampton based videographer. I can send this all to you and Pete later and then two others through the college. Great. I might know somebody, um, a kid who was, he deferred going away to college because of COVID, but he's like super into video and that's what he was like going to um, study for. And he's a Northampton resident. Yeah, just send me all their contacts and their emails if you have them. I'm also going to have Peter dig through the last like two years of uh, grant applicants and see who uh, was had film ideas that had some camera operation in there. And that would be helpful too. So thanks for these sparking these ideas. Okay. Yeah, please, please let me know, Kathy. Please let me know, Kathy. Um, I love partnering with them here on the same as a part of first many challenges. Um, what else is going on in our board? It's nine o'clock now. Um, I had fundraising subcommittee on there. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to discuss, you know, we could start a draft of a, an annual ask. Um, I don't know when that would be though, because it's either, you know, cause we do, for me, it would make sense uh, between uh, trans performance and first night somewhere, maybe, but maybe not. I don't know where it makes sense because we go from trans performance to first night to four Sundays in February, and then we have a little gap there. So maybe we make our annual ask like around tax time in March, um, early April. Because then I start asking for summer concert series, so we can we can, we can identify March as our annual ask, or we can just jump on like what about if we just jump on um, Giving Tuesday and make that our annual ask? Um, we can do that, but I think March makes sense just from the workload and from my financial perspective because we make we make a lot of asks throughout the year, and I think like when we do an annual ask, I think some people that sponsor us or support us in that way are also going to, they're like usually own the business and they also do donate in their, as their personal, but I feel like there's going to be some crossover. And if there's some, you can just have, you know, fun, uh, what is it called? Uh, fatigue. What is it? Fundraiser fatigue or when you ask people too much for money all the time. Donor fatigue. Donor fatigue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think, um, there's an added benefit if we aim for March of being able to report on the big events from the prior year. Um, so like the letter could summarize like the accomplishments that happened mm -hmm. despite, you know, a shutdown. And we can have an um, awesome mashup donor video with all the stuff we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and go like, booyah, give us some money. <laughs> Is that a good way to ask for money? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> proven. Proven, proven, proven to work. Did we lose Steven? I think um, we lost Steven. And uh, Kathy, I don't think that anything has happened on the fundraising committee since our last meeting. Is that Compassion correct? fatigue. Nice. Um, There's not been a fundraising committee meeting since our last meeting. No, we haven't had a fundraising subcommittee meeting. I think the, you know, what I was hoping that we could focus on is that annual ask thing. And then talking about March would be, I think uh, that would make sense in our, in the way we have things. Uh, um, and we can also like aim towards like RTZ as well coming up. Uh, and we can say we can use some of that money to, to or, I don't know, some, I don't know That's if we can. Great. So. It is good to keep, to to think the way you're thinking and pick the best time of the year for cash flow purposes because I think once you once it's on the calendar I think it should just be an an annual thing that yeah so wherever the like cash infusion is most needed but also where we can like optimize 
reporting on what we've done and make an ask for what's to come. I think that sounds like a sweet. I think our biggest cash flow gap is probably like around now, but it's not even bad because we're like, we're still operating fine. I haven't logged <laughs> into there in a bit. Like it just dips down around now, but I feel like what for what you're saying is like the reporting um, and all that. Uh, like right now is when we're like starting to because we're like paying for stuff for first night like you know um, let's see we still have like yeah we're still fine we still have like ninety two thousand dollars in the bank and we actually let me hit this button again yeah we're still we're still fine I still have to write a check for Steve and Peter though to, to cover their salaries but do you know how many donors we have? Like how many people we have contact information for if we were to do a, a mailing? Uh, again, um, from when we started talking about this fundraising subcommittee is that I most of my contact information is for uh, local businesses and corporations. Um, so I have all their information, but it's making ass of them. I do have private donors from like past, like um, Giving Tuesdays that get given a, to us on Giving Tuesday. And I do have some private donors that like are like, like just people that like donate to us offhand. Um, so off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you, Rachel, but I would imagine my list is about a hundred maybe, but nothing of like probably the most significant giving is probably 250 and it's, um, from somebody that everybody knows in town that's that's, got, that's like a pretty large philanthropist and that's Dorothy Nevis. She like occasionally gives us like some money for first night mm -hmm. supportive or like something. She donates a lot to us because, you know, she's very generous and really supports the arts in a lot of different ways. But yeah, so I can, you know, that's something I have to like focus on and start putting together a donor list. It's, a, it's on my to-do list for sure. Um, and um, that's a private donor list for the annual ask. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, I agree from the standpoint, like, if, you know, doing uh, like a big old appeal in March, because I doubt we'd be able to pull something off probably like more comprehensive sooner than that, given everything else that's got going on. But um, even more so, like, this time next year, if, um, my piece, if this is the kind of like the usual time, there's a slump in any kind of giving, that might be the right time to create something to give around, you know, so something that happens around this time, we could build up a you know some kind of thing that well, we do it's that first becomes... night I, i'm about to get start oh, no, getting but... tons of money on first night so right but i'm you know like if it was november you could base it around like being thankful you know some, find some other off seasonal moment to like do another appeal so you're doing appeal each like ha each semester each half of the year oh, get okay. into that kind of cycle we wouldn't be able to do that now because we're way behind but like do it in march and then see how that goes adjust and find some kind of thing in um next fall but the other thing i was going to say is, is um i really think like putting together a donor base and everything great 100 percent. but i do think we could pick up some support by uh you know finding a way like a nice way at, for some of our events to have like an opportunity for people to easily donate something right there at the event or attending the event and on some registration so if i'm going online to buy my button you know, check a box to kick in another $3. People will do that. So like, I think mm -hmm. having our planned things, but at the events where people are feeling great and they're excited or that I just saw this thing or I'm going, I'm excited for new uh, first night. Mm -hmm. That'd be, you know, some opportunities to get five bucks for how many you know people do it. We can see some nice support from there. That's a great idea. Have you heard about a dip jar? No. It's, um. It's like a little tiny machine that you have at special events and you can set it for like $5 or whatever. And then people just dip their, their card in it and they donate $5. Oh, like, that's nice. cool. Okay. So um, traditionally when we have actual pe person engagement at events, we do make asks um, and the asks would be for scholarship programs and um, in the past, uh, I like to focus on BJ Goodwin and we passed a hat for that. And that's like mm -hmm. with an audience announcement. Um, what I really like, and then we've done it for other scholarship things too, like the music instrument fund and all that kind of stuff. 
But what I'm really interested in is there's a lot of these different, uh, I've been seeing a lot of different charities um, uh, at different like grocery stores and other stores where you just round off your like your change. Mm -hmm. And like, so like, say I, I spend like $9 and 50 cents at River Valley Co-op. And then there's like, she's like, do you want to round up to donate to that? I'm trying to get on those lists. I want that. That's like high. That's a lot of money over a certain amount of time. Um, with our events though, uh, we are, you know, I, I just haven't been successful besides a pass the hat, Amen, and like then asking, I wonder if what we could do is like, you know, we're usually renting venues, so we can't put like a big box out for money in the middle of the venue. So I right. would love to hear your thoughts on like the best way we could um, like capture that $3 or something. And by, oh you, yeah. So, is it just an ask? Yeah. Like, hey, are you, did you buy a ticket? Yeah. Um, the additional like, donation on a web ticket sale is like amazing. Oh yeah. yeah. So the additional, yeah. so we so, have to change our button thing. The square can square I have to program square to do that. Right. We're not so, selling yeah. tickets right now. So that's going to have to be when, right. when we figure out so, this COVID thing. Even, um, you know, at like, you know, say once we're back in, per, you know, people are, you know, up there doing whatever they're doing, it, even like a casual, like a mention at the end, like, you know, this is, sponsored by blah 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 you know if you would like to support like events like this and have already ready to go our very easy place where people can donate online so they can you know we could you could have you know make it easy for people you know, have a qr code scan people are able to easily you know find the address and go right there like making okay. it easy for people as they walk out they can complete it you know that so there are people the point is capturing the warm and fuzzy people are having at that moment yeah they, absolutely. You know, and um, i'm stealing the idea from like professor lectures and panels on campus like yeah, yeah. at the end they're like oh if you would like to support research like i'm doing go to blah here and support the school it's the same thing like cool i want to get the you could template it so that at each event you could have anyway sorry that's yeah no no it's a really good idea and we have a you know we have a donation page now i can that i've updated you guys should check out uh and that's how we're gonna be asking for money uh now it's just all the different ways to donate and now um I have figured out that like, you know, I'm registered as a charity with PayPal. We don't get to charge any, I have a particular link that doesn't charge us any fees anymore. So if you donate $50 to us, we get all the $50. Mm -hmm. And now right. you don't, you don't have to log into PayPal either. You, you get to, you can just use your credit card and not have a PayPal account. Um, and so there's the three ways you can donate right on here. And it's, uh, you can mail a check, you can click here. And then, so either, um, yeah, so it's either mail a check or click on um, the donate button, and then you have we have our guide star profile and then our PayPal giving fund profile as well. Mm -hmm. So that's all up there. I'm interested in this like that machine that Rachel is talking about, which is uh, a cool yeah. idea. The dip machine, maybe we can have that. I'm trying to get off Square yeah. because Square fees are so expensive. Dip uh, I've like seen in some places. Uh, oh where they replaced a, like a pay, like parking meter. They've made it like, you know, so it's, it's collecting chain still, but it's been spin to just collect money for a charity. Oh, so that's it's like, cool. You know, and so it's just like, you know, it's like a little thing it's out there and you, you're able to dump your quarters or whatever in there. And it's just there on the sidewalk and like, you can just, and it works the same exact way as a pay meter used to work. That's cool. But the idea is people just trying to get rid of their change and they just click, 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 click and dump it in there. So add the dip jar to um uh the name of the store where we're gonna sell our buttons oh my god uh cedar chest, cedar chest. i don't know if they'll do that i have to ask hmm. um but that's but, an interesting idea that strikes me as like a, as a at an event you're like oh that was so great to, to, you know dip your card well, i'm gonna talk to cedar chest because they're you know we're selling the first night like hand screen printed posters and then those lapel pins maybe i can add to their checkout where they can donate it to us directly because cedar chest is usually a big um spot for people to get first name buttons and they were more than happy to to take on the task of selling selling those things on their web store as well as in in store so maybe if i convince them to put it on their web store that we can get the dip jar in there too so i'll check that out thank you rachel and then you know when we actually have in-person events we can just uh, discuss some more strategies and getting some extra money. And I think the one like you guys, Rachel and Eamon are saying is like having like donate now to wherever is a good idea. Um, I, I've not personally worked with any text 
text to donate companies, but I have, I understand that the way it works is that you pay through your phone bill. So once you get set up, like if you, like it, it would be amazing to use it, something like trans performance where there's so many people and you make the announcement and then people have their phone and they can do it right there. Um, but I don't, I've never worked with that company. So I don't know like how cost, how much of a take they take or yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to like keep it is, you know, I like how problem with GoFundMe is that they, they you, you don't have to donate to them, but they make it seem like you, as if you do. So people don't like that. Um, but it, it also is like look slick and people like use it easy. Yeah, I actually, if, if you want to, if you shop on Amazon, you can actually pick the Northampton Arts Council as um, a place to donate to. So any, any shopping I do on Amazon, all the money goes to the Arts Council. We get checks from that. So I don't know if you guys know Amazon Smile. You can make that as your Amazon homepage and then pick your charity that like portions of your, your, your things go to. I'm, not, I'm just uh, dictating Kathy's service. Um, I don't know if anybody else has other ideas um, about the annual ask uh, that we're targeting for March. I think actually maybe even April because we're going to finish four Sundays at the end of February and I don't want to like, and then we might turn around by the end of March. Um, and I definitely want to write nice letters on like, you know, nice letterhead and then also do um, maybe something else like, if it overlaps too much with the spring grant round, it might be more work than. Well, it's like usually April, May is a spring grant round. And then like, you know, January, February is like four Sundays, but hopefully like, you know, whoever's on the grant subcommittee, I mean, the fundraising subcommittee can help me, uh, help me like just edit and get the ask ready. And, you know, doing some of that work is, is totally fine um with me which is like we have to draft a really good letter and then it have to be like personally addressed and then maybe you can put a little like gift in there and, um but i don't know what the state of arts council for amazon smile all right um the, so the downside of amazon smile is that in order for it to really pay off um you have to promote amazon you know you just have to like be okay that yeah that's true that's true that. um uh and it it doesn't it's not that every it's just like a small percentage of the purchases that you make um go to amazon smile and go to that charity but like most organizations i know including the cinema like it it amounts to like five dollars every three months or something yeah it, it's it's not much it's not much i agree it like the only way to make it more is to like very widely have a campaign to get everyone to make you their their beneficiary through Amazon. Um, so I'm gonna reach out. Do you guys use Dip Jar at the, the the cinema or just for events that the cinema puts on? We haven't, but only because like our feeling that we don't do many like in person gala like fundraising events like a, you know because we do events every day you know we were just um it we decided against it but i i know other theaters and political campaign campaigns that have used it and they like love it they swear by it cool i would dip at the cinema if it was like a, a three to five dollar it's like when you're getting your popcorn to <laughs> Yep. I don't know. Totally it, Yeah, it might it might make a difference. We'll see. I'm thinking like uh, you know, dip jar at like first name, we'd have to have like twenty of them. Um, but for for trans performance it would definitely work and maybe for, you know it would work for more our free events, I think, We're like effective because we like like Kids Best Fest and like Cinema Northampton and then uh but I probably couldn't use it there and summer concert series and stuff. Um, what else? Uh, so I think we should draft up. Uh, I'll just start working on that donor, private donor database. I'll try to start compiling all this different information I have from different places and make sure it's updated. And then uh, we can go from there and then come up with some kind of like interesting letter. 
I think like end of March and early April is a good target for that. Um, and I'm definitely open. Do you have access to um, people who have purchased buttons online? Do you have their email addresses? Yeah, I do. So there must be like thousands of those, right? There's a lot. I've already add, I already add them to our like Mailchimp list, but I can go get past ones. Oh, I well, can't find any of the GoFundMe stuff, Rachel, like Rachel. I don't know how to get people's contact out of GoFundMe. Oh. So I don't know if you can help with that or know somebody how, how like you'll just uh I, I should Did contact GoFundMe. A lot look into it because the, the 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 admin access is very limited for that i don't know if they let you have that stuff so that because that would be a place i would start for a, a personal ask is all the the charities um i mean all the, the the fundraisers that we raised we did through there for like the COVID 19 relief and then the trans performance that'd be a lot of uh, information yes i agree kathy it is beneficial it is good idea I mean, one way we can handle Kathy's point that it's beneficial to add notes to donors is that um, to donor letters is just letting at the board, you know, whenever the board meeting before we send it out happens, we can all take a look at the lists and say, like, I know this person, this person, this person, and then, you know, Absolutely. arrange to get those letters signed. That sounds like a great idea. I would also think about it not being a letter. Okay. Um, it's not the most engaging. Uh, thing to send out for a solicitation, you know, and like, I don't know, it, I think also, you know, take advantage of being the art council. So we could do a little something a little bit more engaging and colorful and like, you know, than a, like a letter. I think that would be better. Just throwing that out there. Especially since we have time. I think that might be a nice idea. Something like, I don't know, like we'd have to look into cost, but something that could be uh, already enough that somebody might put it up on their refrigerator or they might like keep it up in their office or something like that, you know, with like the with the council on it, you know, that might be, yeah, like that could be something like that. We have our giving yeah. levels on and how to give. Yeah. And in theory, you could scan a little QR code to donate. And then we have, like a, a stock postcard is pretty nicely done. Yep. Um, yep. You know. So you want to do, sorry, I was like trying to like mine stuff from GoFundMe still. Um, <laughs> so you're thinking like a postcard is, is a better idea with a that nice design? It's something that's more already more designed. It's more contemporary. It, people are more prone to like keep it and display it. Um, and it just, I think it just represents better than like a letter. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that idea. We do a pack, we do a mailing pack. So we have a, a small note card with a letter from the director that's hand signed. Then we have a return card where you can write in your credit card information um, and a return envelope. And, and then we give a card. So it's a whole pack. It's expensive though. It's like a $5,000 to $8,000 campaign to print and assemble and mail all of that stuff. And we have, right. you know, so, I mean, it, it depends on, I mean, you could do it at a lesser scale. It doesn't have to be like the full pack and it doesn't have to be a thick card like that. But um, if we wanted to do a mailing, like that's one way to go. Um, I also like the idea of doing a little video or something that we could do. After. Well, we're definitely going to do a video. I want to do like, I definitely do like a 30 second spot. That'll be part of the whole thing. It'll be multi-prong. I'm talking about, I definitely want to have a snail mail campaign, but it doesn't have to be a post. It could, it could be, what if it's an object, you know, with like <laughs> an object with a URL on it? Like, you know, I'm always, I'm like thinking fruit basket, but like, like a nice, like chocolate bar that like says Northampton Arts Council and like you open it and then there's like a URL to our donation thing. To find out more information or something like that something that's like you get something in the mail like everybody loves getting packages in the mail right as opposed to letters and like i want to send them a package of something 
Me, Brian, we need to do what? <laughs> I like the out of the box. I, I like that. I like the outside of the box thinking. I was just, I, the one thing I would throw out there is um, you want to be careful with when you're asking for money, how much you're giving away at the same time. Yeah. Because, you know, if everyone's getting like, oh, this is great chocolate, you know, oh boy, Giardelli, they must not really like need my money. You know, whereas if you, you know, send oh, yeah. them like cheapo chocolate, maybe, <laughs> but like, you know, like, so you well, want to just, I'm just throwing that out there. I like, yeah, the, yeah. let's do something different. But because you um, spent you an eight grand with, at like, the museum, I'm like, well, I would rather spend eight grand and send everybody a present, you know? <laughs> yeah. I do think the reply envelope is very important. I don't think it's worth doing a mailing if there isn't that component. Because if you want to be receiving like large gifts, most people do that by writing a check. Yeah. Do it online. Or like their donor advice fund. They like tell the guy their donor, their donor advice fund thing. Um, right. I mean, if we did that, um, I would suggest that like we would do it in a standard fat lake so that they are, uh, you could use them for multiple purposes. So I like, I would want to talk to you about like, um, what other kind of mailings you might do. So for example, like if, you know, do you use a lot of number six returns or something like, so it makes sense to order a bunch if we're going to order it for a smaller mail, you know, like, yeah. cause there's ways to make your buck go wider if we're going to like do a certain kind of thing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, well, I usually like I mean, print. I usually I have a process. I, I do it for first night. I do like a return envelope. I do a letter. I just print it. I don't make it nice. I I do get like a the letter designed, and I get like um, I make it look nice, and I have a return yeah. envelope with directions and things. That, it's like very similar to like the same kind of idea. Um, but Is I that want like a number nine. Though, or? I don't ever it's like I do I use number 10 envelopes and then like yeah probably like a number six envelope inside that like fits a check yep um so and then I a little if, like go ahead I wonder if we could have a local work of art that was either in our biennial or that is a from a project that we funded put on a magnet with like our little our new logo on the bottom mm -hmm. and that's something that we can send out like we can we can have a mass order of them so that the cost per quantity is really low mm -hmm. um, we could have them at our in-person events when those happen again for either for free or for donation um right. people can put them up and it feels more like a, a present than a postcard but it's a mask. Yep. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, might as I've done well. things like what daniel said like that's a great idea so you're doing you're investing in something you're ordering more for five purposes instead of one um and it does the same thing as the postcard like i've done uh pop-out magnets where you're getting kind of like two magnets for one you know one could be like say like a four inch square that is a frame for a photo and they use to hold the photo up and others like a separate magnet so you're getting it in two spots it's got your information on it and it can be shrink wrapped or adhered to one side of a postcard that goes out it doesn't disrupt the mail and when it goes through the, the sorting machines and stuff there are ways to do something like that. And then you could have these other ones for events and things like that. Um, that would be like four or five uses for one product. Hmm. Sounds like- I'm gonna need to go in a minute. Well, we have some some uh, some more brainstorming to go to do. So we should definitely, who's on this committee? I, I, got, I don't have it on the- is it who's here? Is Aaron, I'm, Danielle? I'm interested in being on it, but I don't know if it ever actually was. Was it formed? Did we? Uh, like it, it's an ink committee, so we can just the ink can talk about it. Our people on the musical board can be on it. Yeah, I don't think a fun music committee. Yet. We have an actually small note for small. Candy bar. Oh, <laughs> Pleasant Street Video did candy bars. Um. Right. Yeah, I Maybe. like all the ideas. I just like, you know, whatever. And, and it might be something much simpler. But I definitely want to have a donation ask video and an online campaign going as well as a snail mail campaign. And the online campaign, I think, should be more grassroots. And then the, the, the snail mail should be like targeted private donors that have donated in the past or that we've identified as arts uh, philanthropists. I think uh, an email campaign with the MailChimp. Okay, if if you're pu putting all the first night and trans performance yeah, yeah. people into MailChimp, you should definitely use that for 
for asks every like couple weeks or so during that sounds good um i definitely sell tickets like that and then i can use i do use it to uh for our for our gofundme campaigns as well um and i definitely would use it for uh asking for money for our, our annual ask um any other thoughts about this and i like all the ideas we have and i have to like retain some of them um <laughs> I, mean, I think we should form form the committee all right and well danielle has uh, volunteered and i think amen's on board as well yeah um, I'm on board. you're on board and then uh i think kathy murray was interested in it and it's be good to have the treasurer on too as a fundraising kathy service is on board is she yeah she is she's always got good ideas everybody here has great <laughs> ideas so we'll try to like get that into something that's a uh, ha <laughs> um something that's like serviceable but i definitely like the I like the idea of separating the online and the snail mail because that's what i do with first night it's super i have two lists for first name people that i communicate with email and then I have people that I communicate with the letters and snail mail um and it's definitely two different donor donor groups that appreciate it like i can't send the guy from blue bonnet diner an email he'll never respond but as soon as i send a letter he sends me back the return thing and he's like <laughs> really really happy with that and then he's always like bring me a first night poster <laughs> and i have to go over there and find jim and give him his first night poster um so yeah so we gotta just i just gotta figure out how our private donors like to be communicated with you know so but also both it's gonna help because everybody's online nowadays too um uh, can I have a move to close the ink meeting? I got what I got, Rachel and Steven here. Move. Yeah. I All move right. to close the ink meeting. Thanks, everybody. As the, Thanks before everybody. we close it, no new business. Second, Kathy's second. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying long and the healthy discussions and all the good ideas. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye guys. Good to see Thanks. you all. Good night. Bye.